so it's new to me. It's a different world. It's a new language. It's it's a wonderful world. I feel it like is. it's a little simpler, but then there are some things that are so simple. We are recording, by the way. All right. We're just doing some tiny talk before we get into the I intro. I love tiny talk. Oh, God. Thank you, by the way, for the beer. This is very kind of you. Mark. You brought them. So I'm re-gifting your gift. Oh, I appreciate that. In a, in a way, that's very sweet. You brought me six beers. I really appreciate it. But if I got six beers in my hotel room, I'll drink them at night alone with a boner, and it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna give me a, ha- a hangover. And I'd rather have five and a boner and a boner. Oh, perfect. That's that's like the nice balance between boner and beer. Yes, boner and beer. Horrible Bo- radio team. <laughs> boner and beer in the morning, but. This is yeah. This is boner and beer. How old are you? I am thirty-two. All right. How how your boners doing? My bo- they're okay. They're not quite that of a forty-eight-year-old where it just slips through my fingers like wet spaghetti. Mm. But they're okay. I don't need medicine for them yet. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Okay, that's great. How how are your boners doing? You know, I had a weird run in like thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, where I couldn't get it up, and mm. I was just like racking my brain what the hell i can't get i was the boner guy i was getting boners on playgrounds and <laughs> wendy's and you name it the ball pit at mcdonald's and i just couldn't get a boner and it was all mental i just worked it into my because you know your friend can't get one he tells you about it and you just start thinking about it and i couldn't get one and i was with smoking hot girls and it's just nothing i remember i was with this beautiful lady in florida oh once god. and i couldn't get it up and she was like what's going on i'm, not, I'm like i swear to god this never happened. i was like a cliche oh no I, you know what now that we are going deep into boner talk i did have one boner challenge when i was like 28 years old uh-huh. mom you're gonna love this but oh it's better if you sorry mom <laughs> i didn't know mom was listening no she's not she's <laughs> seen limp dicks <laughs> her husband's 66 years old i'm oh. pretty sure she has some to share maybe we'll have her on in the next episode yeah but yeah i remember i think it was 20 27, 28, there was one time that I just, I I did exactly like you said, I was trying too hard, headspace wasn't around at the time, so I wasn't right. able to just relax and let go, and the boner was boneless. It was yeah, just... it's kind of the first time a young man has to like look within himself and tell himself to relax, because it's all mental. You're Because you wake up with a boner, you go, where the hell was this last night? What the fuck? It's, it's so cruel. But then you gotta like sit there and go, it's in your head, you gotta push it down, you gotta accept it, and blah, blah, blah. And it's kind of the first time you have to go inside the brain like that. That's very true. God, it's like, uh, it's almost like a meditation sense. It in is. Itself. It is. Man, headspace, like tiny headspace is probably what I like we it. should do. I like it. There you go. Yeah, that's how powerful sex is. Like that, most guys are too wired up and juiced up to meditate, but this will get them to do it. That is brilliant. And instead of the, the British guy, what is it, Andy Puttycomb? It's like, hello. Have you ever done Headspace before? Oh, is that his name? Yeah. Oh, I never knew that. Yeah. He's good. He's pretty. They, he has a Netflix show now where he's what? talking about yeah, Damn. Headspace, and he guides you through meditations and stuff. That's... Have you seen him? No. He's like, he's this bald guy that's just jacked. Ah, yeah. That's yeah. Really yeah. fun. It's always the way. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. But um, that, I don't know if he gets boners. That's he so fun. I, I'm sorry. I pitched like 18 shows to Netflix, and they're all like, "Yeah, blow me!" And it's like all these things. I was like, "This is gold. It's gonna change the world. Everybody's gonna see it and love it." And they're always like, "Nah." And then if I would have known Petty Dick was walking in behind me <laughs> with a meditation show, I'd be like, "Well, this guy's a goner." But uh, apparently, this guy's cleaning up. I mean, maybe there's some sort of meditation techniques that, or mm. hypnotization techniques yeah, that he's yeah. using on that. I wonder if he's a, a single man because if he's if he is, he must be cleaning up. You know, just like, take off your bra, <laughs> undo your pants. Maybe he walked in and pitched with a full boner. So that mm. way he showed the confidence and what it was like, the results from meditation. Ah, uh-huh. yes. So like, and everybody was like, hire this man, you know, because he came in with a boner and still sold us. That's impressive. Louie tried that, didn't work. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I have a very loud laugh. Hey. Small spaces create uh, Love a loud laugh. reverberations. Yeah. But you know what? I am excited because I am going to be laughing tonight at the Tempe oh. Improv with, if you guys don't know who this is yet, it's Mark Normand. Hey, hey. 
Comedy. And, and this is a Comedy Advice Podcast. I'm Stefan Satani, your host, Mark. Super excited to be here in person with you. This oh, yeah. First, uh, yeah, first podcast we've done, or I've done in person in like eight months, so. Yes, I will let anyone in my hotel room. <laughs> it's a sad state of affairs. I get lonely, and I can't say no, obviously. If I was a woman, I would be fucking every Tom, Dick, and troll on the planet, because I can't say no. <laughs> so it's a male privilege, I guess. I can let a strange dude in my hotel, and I feel completely safe. You know, it was when I was asking you questions like, where's your hotel? What room are you in? I felt a little strange because I it's been so long since I've asked a stranger that. Right. And, uh, maybe the first time I've asked a stranger that. And All so right. was uh I felt a little I was like, oh my gosh, am I gonna be like vi- uh, violating him or uh, <laughs> making him feel nah. unsafe? But you know. my friends have been putting their fingers up my ass for twenty years, uh, you know, titty twisters. That that's the funny thing about sexual assault is like Women are like, you have no idea what it's like to be sexual. I'm like, that was my whole childhood. My my <laughs> asshole bled from 89 to 01. You know? So, like, I get it. Because I was assaulted by boys. Women are getting assaulted by men. So it's way worse. I'm not minimizing it. But I'm just right. saying, that's all boys do is assault each other. You know? Wet right. willy and credit card swipe, oil check, dick flick, nut tap. You know? What's the capital of China? Bangkok. Which isn't even accurate. That's right. And you know what? All those things might be contributing factors to all of our boner problems in our 30s to 40s. <laughs> Maybe, so, yeah. You know, like bent dick or, or an oil check. You never know. Right, but right. It is true. And, uh, you know, I was just <clears throat> checking out. I watched your special. Oh, out to lunch again. And it just won special of the year. I can't believe 2020. It. That's amazing. Pretty good for a YouTube that nobody would buy. <laughs> oh, my God. And now it's got 5 million views. We just hit 5 mil. It's very exciting. Uh, yeah, it's all it's all up from here. I wish I made a penny on every view. Oh, it'd be my nice. God. What oh. would that be? A penny for five mil? That would be. What's five million pennies? Five hundred thousand dollars. Really? That seems wrong. I don't that know. Seems high. We I... need an Asian to call it. <laughs> uh, but it was such a good special. And watching again this time, I watched it with Thank my you. wife, oh. who English is her second language. Uh-huh. So sometimes, I think she's super fluent. Sometimes comedy, it might go past her if there are old references. Sure. But she watched you and was like, this guy is good. Wow. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate that. Tell your uh, immigrant wife I said I appreciate it. <laughs> I will. And she'll be seeing you with me tonight at the Tempe Improv. Ooh, so, uh, great. It's all, all new material. We're ve- Oh, really? Yeah, well, it's, it's shaky. It's a little Michael J. Foxy, but it's, it's new. <laughs> I thought he was better anyway after he started checking. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like him. Oh, man, I'm he, so... Ex- he should be on Twitch. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> I'm having too much fun. Oh, man, but, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say, too, the special. If you guys haven't seen it, please see it. I think you get a penny, less than a penny, for every I watch. Think so. But the, the comedy is so, just so good, so juicy. There are callbacks, juxtapositions, ah. different role reversals. It's just... Thanks. Uh, uh, meta humor. I, I was cracking at my favorite joke. And we I think we were talking about blood splattering all over the place earlier. But uh-huh. um, if men had periods, that one just... Oh, yeah. Fuck, it killed me. Wow, killed I forgot me. about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'd be so open about it if men had periods. And blood would be all over the place. All over the place, <laughs> yeah. It'd be, a, it'd be a thing where, like, all right, it'd, they'd be like uh, napkins on the wall for guys. Like, male <laughs> napkins. Like, all right, here you go, man. You know, it's like uh, Burger King or something. Oh, man, that image that you painted in the special just like, totally got me. And then the act-outs afterwards where you're just some guy just walking around with blood spilling over. He's like, can you give me one of those masculine napkins? There and- you go, yeah. I mean, I mean, I think about how much semen is in this room. So, <laughs> thank God jizz is clear, or else we'd be ruined. Now, you see the blacklight photos, it's a, it's a fucking, uh, what do you call that guy? Pollock painting. That's Oh, oh God. God. Yeah, that's how God intended it to be. I clear guess. semen, red blood. There you go. Or something. Yeah. I think the semen creates life, and the blood is kind of a representation of, of someone in danger. You know, so it's got to be red, so uh. you can see it. That's pretty. That's pretty damn good. Well, you know, I'm, I used to hang out with Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> no, no. Uh, stars and come. That's uh, yeah, his special. Uh, also, also another morning team. <laughs> <laughs> stars and I like that one better than boners and beer. Stars and come in the morning. Oh, if they got them all together, that would yeah. be like the Avengers of Radio. Right. WCUM. <laughs> oh my god. 
It was funny too because I remember I just listened. You were just on the Joe Rogan podcast, yes, like a week ago. How does he schedule those out, or did you go and then he posted it the same day? Or? No, I did that in early December, and okay. I did. I waited. You know, usually they come out sometimes that day or at least the next day or at least two days, but it didn't come out. I waited a week, and you know, I took a photo of me there. I'm telling yeah. fans like, "Hey, I'm here," you know. Didn't come out. Then everybody's like, what happened? I was like, ah, I don't know. Then two weeks went by. I'm like, oh, geez, did Spotify rip it? Because I said some Jew jokes or what the hell's going on? You know, who knows with Spotify now? Yeah, And yeah. I'm kind of like freaking out. And also, it's it's a huge thing for your career. It's like a big exposure. It gives oh, you a course. nice bump. So you kind of want it to come out. And everybody's questioning me. And I'm like, I look like this psycho liar guy. <laughs> And eventually, I texted Ari, who knows Joe personally, and I was like, "What should I text Joe? What should I do here?" And he goes, "I wouldn't just leave it. He'll figure it out. I don't know." And I was huh. like, "Oh shit!" So then he texts me out of the blue one day, he goes, "Hey, just letting you know, I bought, I canned a few. It's gonna come out on New Year's." So I was like, "Oh, okay, great." Oh man, oh, I would have been sweating bullets. But you, yeah, your brain just starts, you know, brewing up weird shit. Maybe I did this. Maybe I pissed him off. Maybe it was a bad episode. You know, you just start going into negativity land. Yeah. No, I thought it was a fantastic episode. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. It was a fun one. Yeah. I a... feel like behind the Spotify wall, you can be wackier. Right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. Because only the real... You have to actually seek it out now, so only the real people are into it, it seems like. Mm, wait, what do you mean? Like... Well, like, before it was just up on YouTube willy-nilly, and you had you, you had to, like, uh, dodge Rogan episodes were coming at you, you know? Oh, that's true. Yeah, and yeah, now you got to, like, log in, you got to pay money for a month, whatever it is, a monthly <clears> fee, so... I don't have Spotify, but uh, I'm just saying, it, 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 you have to like find it now, I think. Right, right. You have to use your boner as a password. It's, it's just there a new go. Spotify protocol. But no, you're right. I mean, when I was on YouTube going down different rabbit holes, Joe Rogan would pop up and then there'd be a little segment. There's, the team is so good at doing yeah. this, finding these little the snippets. Algorithm, snippets. They, they get you one by one and they, you just can't get off of it. Oh, man. Yeah, it's crazy. But... Great episode. Thank um, you. I was going to say, you're also going to be on Jimmy Fallon tonight? Tonight, yeah. That's Another a, crazy story. That's amazing. So tell me a little bit about that. You're going to be doing stand-up from the Staten Island Ferry? So, all right, it's, I'll, I'll make a quickie here, but we shot that in ooh, July, I think. Uh-huh. So they're doing tonight's show sets. Nate Bargatze did one. This guy Josh Johnson nice. did one. And, like, you have to do it in this weird place, obviously because of COVID. And then yeah. you shoot it, you send them the tape, and they air it, which is so weird. Usually you go to 30 Rock, it's a live audience, you know, huh. the roots are right here, it's a whole thing. But, so they hit me up and they go, hey, there's a, you, I've done it a few times, so they trust yeah. me, I guess. And they're like, will you do one? I said, I'd love to do one. I'd like to do one on a roof. And they said, great. But then I was like, wait, what if we shot it on the ferry? My friend Matt Salacuse was like, we should shoot it on the ferry. I said, that's a great idea. <laughs> and it was windy as hell, and it didn't come out great. But the idea was so fun that they, they, they bought it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, man. Can't wait to see it. It took so long to shoot, though. Like, we had a drone, and it was so windy that the drone went up and went right in the water. It was oh, crazy. Shit. So oh, it was man. a horrible shoot. I'm just going, so I, my hair is, like, all the way over here. My jacket's flying this way. It's a whole thing. But watch it just for the spectacle. The jokes are horrific because I can't get them out and there's a couple people laughing but you can't hear them because it's so windy. Oh man. It's a it's a debacle. Oh man, can't wait to see it. You're really selling it. Sounds great. Well, when it's on YouTube, it'll it'll be it'll be a fun little moment in time. Nice. Nice. And I'm sure they'll edit it in post at yeah. the laughter or something. But uh yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed. Hopefully. I also did 5 minutes in like 2 minutes. My my friend Matt was directing and he's going Oh, really? I did because you just when you're bombing you just rush through your act you know, and uh, it it does not you know you get laughs or maybe an applause break in the in the right. thirty rock on the boat you get like a <laughs> you're like all right on to the next one. Oh, sh I, I was gonna ask about that too because I mean how long have you been doing stand up? 14, 15 years? Yeah, and, about fourteen. Uh, and uh, I was gonna ask because the times that I've done stand up I have found myself in that situation bombing and then going faster than I anticipated. Of course. And I was gonna say, does it still phase you or does it still? Oh yeah. Oh, it hurts. It still hurts. It still gets that anxiety pumping, and you're you're freaking out, fight or flight. You're sh you're you're <sighs> you're kind of shambling up there. You're like, what, what do I? And you you can't think as quick. And yeah, that's you kind of want that though. You don't want that to go away completely. You don't want to be the guy like sitting down, going, 
You don't get me. Fuck you. I'm great. Whatever. I'm, That's true. You don't want to be that guy. You want to have true. that that fear a little bit. Keeps you in check. Yeah, that's true. I remember talking, I think it was Jamie Lisso. He was telling me. Oh, he's funny. Oh, hilarious. Love him. And he was telling me that he to <laughs> he started doing a lot more crowd work to feel more alive. And ah. I know it was hyperbole, but it, I, I think it's, you know, getting out of the routine, feeling a little bit more. And kind of like you said, it's good to still feel those feelings. Yes. To kind of feel like you're alive and not just going and having everything being rote and completely i mean it's 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 the way of life though like we've all been on stage and you're a comic you... no nah, kind uh, of all right all let's right. call i'll use that snippet for for uh, all right yeah. well we'll say you dabble yeah okay there you go you've done it yes okay well if you're doing an hour even if the jokes are killer, you can kind of get into a rhythm, and you've got to figure for an hour of the same da 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 It gets a little lullaby-ish. So sometimes you do some crowd work, it's almost like a pinky in the butt, where like you don't want to just plow a gal and missionary. You could be having great plow and a great boner and a great veg and a whole thing, but you got to put a finger in the ass or flip her over or jizz in an eye or... <laughs> You know, call your mom. Something's got to happen where it mixes it up a little bit. Right. And that's what's great about crowd work. Right. You are so good at analogies, by the oh, way. Geez. I was listening just through your special, through uh, all the like 17,000 podcasts that you've done. Yeah. You're really good at, even on the fly, just finding a nice analogy that makes it fit while also being shockingly funny. Well, I don't understand anything. So uh, for me, an analogy is the only way to make a connection between two things. That see, that's what I same with me. But I just suck at making analogies, so mine are a little less funny. Well, way less funny than yours. But yours again, are, these are written. I've tried thirty eight before I got to the right one. So uh, it's not. I'm not just willy nilly coming up with these. But like I used to have this analogy about how having a gay son is like finding a French fry in your onion rings. You know, and at first you're like, what? And you go. It's not what I expected, but I like these too. <laughs> and that was like a, one of my big early jokes that would really hit. Yeah. And uh, people would always be like, how did you think of that? And I'm like, I tried 800 different things. That's how I thought of it. Oh, So I was nice. like, having a gay son's like finding a rat in your shoe. It's it's surprising, but woo, it's kind of fun or whatever it is, you know? And right. so you just try 30 of them and then you're like, this one's clicking. That's awesome. And I remember hearing, I think it was One More Drink with Sam Morrill where you guys were talking about your... Was it, no, it wasn't the abortion joke on your special. It was the trans joke where you were like, that bombed for seven months. Yes, yes. But I just had a feeling right. that it was going to be good. And then I kept getting at it. And then I finally got it to a space where I was getting laughs. I mean, that's the that's weird a thing about jokes. That's a long time. That's, oh, it's, it's half my act takes that long. So tonight you're going to see a lot of jokes that are kind of half-baked. Not killing, but not bombing, kind of in the right. middle, and then you're gonna be like, "All right, what's the, when's this one ending? What's the, what's gonna be in the next joke?" You know, right? And that's right. just me trying to find it. And so everybody always goes, "This set wasn't that great." And I go, "I know, but it's it's got to happen to get to that one." There you go. Exact. It's almost like having sex with a girl because you got to missionary might be the best thing the first time because right. you're like, oh, my God, I don't want to come right away. Exactly. And then after you're used to things, then you can start just like a finger somewhere. Right. Go probing, switch it up, pivot. Yep. And then you're uh, you're just on point. And I feel like with your special every single se I, I don't think I remember a special. I've seen a lot in the pandemic, maybe too many, but it's just like laugh after laugh after laugh. And it's just not just premise, setup, punchline. It's just like punchline, tag, 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 yeah, tag. Yeah, yeah, but that's just years of honing that, that hour, that hour, that hour. I mean, I would go to Denver and they would go, hey, it was a good show, but we saw that last year. And then I'd go back the next year and they're like, we saw that two years ago. And I was like, I know. So I had to put it on, on YouTube. But oh, man. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of that where you're just doing it again and again and again. And then you are you know it so well. It's, it's like autopilot that you go, you're on stage saying it, and you're thinking about laundry or your asshole or your aunt or whatever it is, and then you go, "Oh, this could be funny." You're so in, you're so like out of it that you're, you're uh -huh. you, you can write on stage. Nice. That's all. I remember I interviewed Josh Blue. And oh he wow. Was, he was saying he 
doesn't write anything down and he i don't know how he does it i don't know how anyone does that but he was talking about something similar about he had the ideas and he had a, a general structure and then he'll just think of something or add something sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't sure. but then if it's good it's another scoop of ice cream on the comedy gelato so there you go i think uh that's great i think it's i think that's cool and fun and, and exciting but i don't know if you're gonna get the best product you can get without tinkering it in the lab uh -huh, but that's uh -huh. just my own anal i don't know that's... to each his own so i don't know uh i don't want to say he's doing it wrong or i'm doing it right i'm not saying that i'm just saying right. i s suspect if you're not practicing it in your underwear in your hotel room it's not going to be as good as it could be i'm not saying it's not great right but i think it could be greater right no i i totally agree in what i'd I, being an amateur, what I try and do is write every morning for mm -hmm. at least 30 minutes. Oh, and, nice. And then what I do is Monday through Thursday, write 30 minutes. And then Friday, I'll look over what I wrote and see with a different perspective where there's not so much emotion attached or just a fresh perspective. Oh, is there some gold to be pl to be uh -huh. gathered from this? Or can I tag this? Or can I make this a little bit better? Yeah. So, How the uh, hell do you do that every day? The discipline. I mean, don't you got to take a shit? You got to shower. Sometimes you got to go to jury duty. You I mean, make sometimes breakfast. I do both. You know, I know, but I'm just saying, like, 30 <laughs> minutes in the morning. The morning is so crucial. It is. You know what? It is. However, I it's maybe it's serendipitous because my wife she has to work at 5:30 in the morning. So what Ooh. she does, I have to work at nine, but she gets up alarm at 5:25 for her. Five minutes, she's ready for work. Me, what I do, I make her a, a nice coffee. And then I go and I set a timer and I write. And so that like two and a half hours before I have to go to work, I'm up anyway. And so I just decide to write. Good and, for you. Yeah, make a ritual out of it. I so. would be on YouTube. I'd be rubbing one out. I'd be I'd be <laughs> uh, eating breakfast. I'd be, I don't know, maybe a sit up or something. I just, that's very impressive. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I don't have any specials or anything, but I appreciate that. I know, but Cobra Kai is on. <laughs> I'm just saying there's so much Facebook and Instagram and po you could tweet or whatever. That's that's, that's good. That's I'm, true. I'm saying keep doing it, but that's very impressive. I, I appreciate that. I wanted to also ask about your new material that you've been working on. Has it been in the lab for quite a while? Oh, is yeah. It, it, does it have a good shelf life? As in, is it a lot of corona or pandemic stuff, or is it a mix? And where do you plan on going with it? Is it, is it going to stay preserved and packaged for another special? Or is some of it going to just be like, you know what? We're in some shitty times right now. This might not be relatable in a year. So just creating that stuff and oh, getting it's, last. It's totally a little everything. It's a weird gumbo of material because... We're in a pandemic, so I don't really have a lab, you know, like, uh, yeah. you know, I used to have my living room, my girl would go to her office job, so I could really explore and go gay in my apartment, but now <laughs> she's she's working at home, and, you know, a lot of the road isn't what it used to be, and right. the shows have all dried up, kind of, so I feel like I'm a scientist, and my my, my lab has, like, a, a wall missing, something, so like, a truck backed into it, so it's this duvetine flapping, so I can't really experiment <laughs> like I want to, uh, so... The, the the jokes aren't as tight. They're a little shoddy, and they're they're almost something there, but it's not that pearl that you want it to be. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. I do like five minutes of Corona up top just to kind of address it. It's this crazy thing, We're in a pandemic. Fair. It's uh, it's unprecedented, whatever. And then I trickle in a little bit of uh, relatable stuff. I go real mainstream up top, drinking, uh, sex, relationship, blah blah blah, just to get them in. And then nice. I get weirder. And then the end is like this big. <laughs> I'm tr I always try to have a big crescendo at the end, a real money shot, and I do this whole thing about uh, how old people and kids have trip, uh, traded places, and uh, it's a whole thing, but it's, again, it needs that, that ending, but it's not there yet. Got it. So you're really seeing some scaffolding on, a, on an hour here. I'm excited to see it, man. All right. Really pumped. That's cool, too, because I think the... The th if I remember it all correctly, on Out to Lunch, it was more the weird stuff almost up front, and mm. then it started going into relationships. Right. Like wetting the bed and... Uh, therapy. Fine. Yeah, yeah, therapy, yeah. pedophiles sure. and... School shootings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to get it out. I was so confident in those jokes. I'm like, I'm doing these out of the gate, baby, and then I'll end with the relatable. But now I'm not confident, so I'm opening with relatable. Oh, okay. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, this is, uh, I know we're uh, going to get out of here a little bit soon, but we're going to get into the advice portion oh, sure, of the podcast. Sure. 
Oh, I also um, I have some questions that some fans sent in for you. Wow. Matt says, if you had to choose an alternate dimension mark to be, who would you choose? And that was, I'll give you time to think. I don't know what that means. I think, you, so there was a video of you where Stephen Hawking explained, oh, in multiple yeah. dimensions, there are different types of marks that could come in to help you in this dimension be a better person mm. i think there was woman mark that helped you give your girls orgasms there was, right uh marketing mark that yes. was uh i think i would be a uh, secure mark <laughs> wouldn't that be nice to not have any insecurities and be confident and no weird past and no weird uh, troubling issues and you know nice family life and a normal upbringing i, I would be a uh, stable mark that would be fine. Keep the body, keep the face, keep the you know, the balls, everything me, but I would just be nice to have a different brain. That's beautiful. I think that's good. And that I would probably be stable, secure Stefan, too, because yeah. it happens to everybody. I think it gets maybe exacerbated in these times right. because you're inside. You don't have your lab or we don't have our places that we usually go, the people that we usually see in some cases, and those insecurities just tend to crawl up into us i'm getting way too serious no for this podcast, i'm but. with you man i mean i take sleeping pills every night because i gotta knock out i have a i have an air pod in my ear going podcast podcast just so i can drown right. out all the, the 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 evil right right exactly so it'd be, it'd be night you know you see these guys just fall asleep at like a jimmy john's you're like how the fuck are you doing that that must be what a great life you just have that little going on and that little in your head that you're just like oh my God. Oh, it's so that's heaven. It's yeah. I wish I could get back to those days. You were and, there, and, and well, I think when I was when I was in high school, I had a bit. I had cool hair. It yeah. was actually I'm growing it out now because I have nice hair. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I haven't visited a barber in a long time, so I had shorter. But in uh, high school, I had the band and I had the little Justin Bieber. Oh cut. yeah, yeah. I've I felt like I was on top of the world, just singing melodies in three keys. And oh, God, oh man, you're six three. You got luscious <laughs> hazel hair. You got a uh, decent guns. You're killing it, Fatty. Oh, I appreciate it. But now I'm just filled with riddled with insecurities. Really? So, yeah. I'm like, I was, I was. So nervous today. I was like, I'm going to oh, meet with Mark Norman, on. one of the funniest people I've ever oh, seen. Get yeah. out of town. Well, wait crazy. till I rape you. <laughs> I was looking forward to that part. But, yes. you know, the <laughs> that water has been spiked. <laughs> Amazing. So we have, uh, all right, we've got another question from Tiffany. What's your sign? <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany, what a retard. That's what you ask? <laughs> you can Google that. I mean, uh, no offense, Tiff. I'm sure you're a nice lady, but uh, boy, you, that's Tiff. such a hack question. I'm a Virgo, but none of it's real. Who cares? It's all silly. Uh, you know, get a job and grow up. <laughs> it's beautiful. Love you, Tiff. All right, and um, thanks, Je Tiff. Yeah, Jess says, "How does it feel to be the new sexier and younger generation's Jerry Seinfeld?" Wow. Well, I think I think Jer had a real he had a real tear going uh, of uh, skanks and gash in his day. He did all right. <laughs> <clears throat> I love but, Gash. That's a beautiful euphemism for great, great term for the the uh, the clam. Okay, I'm glad we confirmed. I didn't know if it was a wound, or, but yeah, okay, good. Yes, yes, but no, uh, no. I, I she's very nice. I uh, I don't know if I agree. I mean, he's a zillionaire <laughs> and has a TV show. I can't sell anything, and I'm on YouTube and Grinder, so it's a big gap there. Oh man. Well, I, I she's hopefully. Very nice. Yes, thank you, Jess. Okay, and, um, at least I'm not a Jew. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I wish I was. I'm a wannabe. Uh, well, we've got about 10 minutes left. We're going to go into some questions. We've got about two. Plus, before we get into it, an inspirational quote to help just get us jazzed and answer these questions. Now, All right. Before I get into the inspirational quote that I have, I usually like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that help get them through their dark days. Oh, jeez. I just heard one. The other, I love a good quote. Uh, I just heard one the other day that I was like, "Woo, baby, that's that's a zinger." But oh man, I didn't peg you for a quote. Guy. Oh, love a good quote because a quote is like a good bit. You know, they have to word it perfectly. It's got to be short. It's got to be impactful in so many words. It's got to hit you. You know, that's very yeah, that's very true. Uh, I didn't think about it like that. Damn, I, I feel like I'm letting you down here. I, I'm you a, are, I but read, that's okay. I read so many quotes and I'm like, oh, that's great, that's great, that's great. So if you go great quotes on Google, it's just, give that a Pats. Goog. I mean, yeah, it's a whole day's worth. 
That's right. That's right. You know what? You give me one. Maybe it'll jog <clears throat> something in my ass. Well, I'm going to help make you feel a little better with my quote, because my quote, it's not by any person. Mm. It's actually by a robot. It's called Inspirobot. Mm. And it's if you go to inspirobot.me, it's a robot that you just click, and it generates inspirational quotes using AI to take some Ooh. of the wisest words known to man or woo man, just mash them together. I like. I All like. Right. So I'll read this one. It actually comes with a picture as well, if you mm -hmm. can say. It says, we'll try and decipher it. <clears throat> they can force you to get rid of your fears, but they can never force you to exercise regularly. I like. I pretty, like. Pretty you, good. Is that you? That's in, No, that's Inspirobot. Oh, oh, oh that's wow. That's Inspirobot. I, I just like clicked it. and Inspirobot was like, here you go. Oh, so, that's cool. Yeah. All right. I thought of a couple. One was, uh, every man has two lives, and his second life begins when he realizes it's going to end. Oh, shit. I might have fucked that up, but it's something like that. Do you have the moment where you realized that it was going to end? Yeah, and that's when you're like, I got to do something here. I'm, I'm yep. 21. I'm a drunk mess. I got no prospects. I got nothing going on. What am I doing with my life? I, I hate everybody I know. My parents are gay. I had to get <laughs> I had to get cooking. And uh, so I moved to New York and started doing comedy. And I, I figured... Even if I suck, even if it doesn't go anywhere, at least I'm doing it. Right. What else am I going to do? Work at UPS? That's Yeah, that's true. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. I'm just saying, like, There's why There's a lot not... wrong with that. Wow. Well, no, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, Love you, Tiffany. But, uh, uh, but, you know, you're in shorts. You got a van with no door. You, everybody <laughs> loves a package. I, got, I like UPS. But I'm just saying, what's the difference if you're working at a shit job and you're a shit open mic or waiter? That's true. That's true. So everybody's scared to take that plunge, but uh, both of them suck. So might as well do the fun suck. That's true. And I feel like there are so many people out there that are just going through the grind, whether it's a nine to five or I think I remember hearing about you. You were in Louisiana. Do you went to film school and were like, nope, no, didn't yeah, like it, totally. Um, and and they're just going through the grind. And if it's a nine to five, it's a shitload of time. That's yes. a lot of your time. Yes. And then now with commutes and everything, I used to live in Elizabeth, New Jersey, so I would commute to the city, so that was like 30 minutes, oh. then another 30 minutes to walk to my building. Oh. oh, it was so much. It was a grind. And then I remember the the moment I watched on YouTube, it was the, the Stanford commencement speech by Steve Jobs, oh, where he wow. was like, everybody is going to die. Yes. Even Christians that want to get to heaven don't want to die to get there. Yeah. That just hit me hard, and I was like, holy shit, I am going to die. What am I doing with my life? And he's like, it's the greatest invention of life because it gives you that sense of urgency. I love it. I love it. I mean, think about a, a woman with a baby, a, a pregnant woman. You get nine months of pregnancy. That's just across the board. Every woman's the same, give mm -hmm. or take. Mm-hmm. But if you if you didn't have those nine months, like if it just came out, let's say ten years, you wouldn't. It wouldn't mean as much. I think the urgency is what's like. Oh my God, this is coming. This is happening. It's nine months, but it's it. it if it came out willy nilly, it wouldn't be the same. It's got to have that finite nine months, and that make, gives it so much more importance. And I right. feel like life is the same way. Right. The, the end is the good part. We, we go, oh, I'm going to die. Life is so scary. What am I going to do? Oh, my God, I'm getting older. But you're like, this is it. Yeah. You, you're, you're wasting it by complaining about it. So just do it. Time is our only, uh, that's all we got is time. So you, people waste it all day long. You, yes. People brag about what, oh, man, I, I binge watched eight series today. I finished Game of Thrones in two days. You're like, yeah, you're a loser. <laughs> go create something. Get a keyboard and Play that motherfucker. What are you doing? Get some origami going. <laughs> Meet a person. Do something, you, you dweeb. And now we have... It's it's ironic because we have so much more time because we have Amazon. We have the internet. Oh, we can just yes. book a flight in two seconds. We used to have to call or right? write a letter, mail it, wait for them to get it. Snail mail, all that shit. Drive here, drive there. And I can just get Grubhub or Uber Eats or whatever it is. We have so much extra time. And then we spend it on Facebook, on Netflix, on social media, on the internet. And you're like... We we cleared up all this time and now we waste it again. That's a, you, you know you made a huge good point where it's like things are so close to us now that we push them far away. Like I could buy a ticket to go to Thailand right now. Am I gonna do it? No. I think I heard on a podcast the guy was saying his friend bought a ticket to Milwaukee for like eight bucks. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's, 
but are, am I going to do it? No, because I don't know. No, just... yeah. And people do that all the time. Ah, I didn't work out. I didn't have the time. You did. You watched all of, uh, you know, Curb. That's and right. You, you could have done it. That's right. That's right. God damn. Rolling in the deep with Mark Norman. Oh, I go deep, baby. Storm in the beaches of Norman. Yes. Hey. I, um, I'll that, take it. I was, you know, I was horrible. So we're, we have two questions now that we're inspired. Oh, God, I feel jazzed right now. All right, jazzed. All right, we've got this first question. It's from our fan, Tim. He found it on Reddit. It says, my manager commented about my eyebrows, saying they are all curled up today. Mm. Is this remark okay to be made to a colleague, and how should I react? Is this a lady? I'm not sure. Tim found the question, but I'm not sure. Sounds like a lady. It kind of does, because if I was a guy and my boss said I have curly eyebrows, I'd think that was almost cool. Kind of, I'd mm. look like a Lord of the Rings character, maybe, Ooh, which yeah. I guess is not cool, but it's I wouldn't take it as a, an offense. Well, she's saying this is some kind of sexual advancement. Oh, I didn't think about that. Like, hey, you got some curvy eyebrows yeah. today. Yeah, if it is, she's really reaching. Like, hey, this guy's talking about my eyebrows. I feel, <laughs> I feel unsafe. You're like, all right, lady. You gotta cool it. She's just grasping for any compliment she can. There's yeah, like, is that yeah. comment a compliment? You uh, know, there's a uh, shit on your uh, shoe there. Oh boy, <laughs> this guy wants to do anal with me. Here we go. Like, come on, sister. But if she's not, I don't want to put words in her dick. But I'm oh. just saying, uh, could be. Yeah, could be. I, I I don't know. I think that's a that's a nothing story, and she's trying to find something. It's also weird that this is what you wrote in. You got you got a one one chance of something. You write about your eyebrows. Who gives a fuck? Go yeah. go out there and live, damn it! Exactly. So I guess we should finalize this by saying this is nothing to raise an eyebrow. Ooh, at. I like it. I like it. That's a little low brow. <laughs> oh, All right. Shit. All right. So this next question it says, any suggestions on how to be an ideal babysitter? So today I was contacted by a woman who wants me to babysit her boys and who was interested in my art skills. And aside from when I was 12, I'm 20 now, this is my first time babysitting kids. I usually talk to kids in the neighborhood and whatnot, but I haven't really watched any for extended periods of time. I'm incredibly nervous. Any pointers would be great. I get it. I think just the main thing is for them not to die. (laughs) <laughs> Just keep the kids alive. Keep them out of the tub. Keep them away from the sockets and the knives and the guns. I think that's the main thing. I totally get it. I think people are way too willy-nilly with babies. You know, they go, you want to hold the baby? I'm like, why would I want to hold the baby? That's just a liability. Nothing good will come of it. I'll drop it. I'll throw it out the window. It'll spit up on me. Oh, my God. I, I would rather hold a, hold a grenade for? than a baby Completely. in some cases. Because it's Completely. like if I drop it, they're going to p- be pissed at me. And then I know. it's like, it's a fucking baby. Relax. Yeah. Like, but, you know, there's also something to be said. Maybe kids uh, were better off when we were a little little less um, kid glovey, you know? Mm, yeah. So so that might be, like you said, an advantage. If you're letting the kid go free reign, as long as you're not getting them murdered or killed, if you're letting them live their life, maybe eat a little gluten sure. or a banana or something, yeah, yeah. You know, some extra sugar, that's them adapting. Because I think there were studies about kids being exposed to different germs and dirt and shit and then... That's not sounding scientific, but no, no, they, they get a little some. bit more adapted and and they build up their immune system. To right, things. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's the you know the Purell generation or whatever it is, they actually get more sick. Yes, exactly, because their body's not used to those exactly. stranger germs. Whereas I will let anyone in my hotel room. I'll touch any door. I never wash my hands. I I, uh, I use dry toilet paper. I'm a <laughs> sicko, dirty guy, and I don't really get sick. There you go. Have you gotten COVID yet? I did. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Which negates my whole point. But <laughs> so, uh, but I, I got it, and I had it for three days. It wasn't that bad, and I, I had a little bit of a stuffiness. I was kind of exhausted, and then it was gone. Oh, my God. Amazing. Yeah. So I think, I don't know. Get them dirty. Roll them around in yeah, the dirt. I think Get them a little dirty. But again, this is a babysitter, so this this is not your kid. So just oh, keep true. it alive, and uh, you know, show it a good time. And kids suck. I don't know why anyone would want to babysit. You know, young when I was a kid, young girls were always like, "I'm babysitting this weekend. I'm making so much money." I'm like, "Good on you, sister," but I can never do that. <laughs> That's very true. I also one quick question, maybe. Uh, I spend. I usually talk to kids in the neighborhood and whatnot. I don't know what that's mm. about. Maybe. What is this little uh, Jared the Subway guy action? What's going on here? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. That's uh, 
I, I think you should probably put an end to that. But anyway, last question, Mark. And then, I, uh, bring it on. Uh, this one, it Tiffany, back again with ah, a question. What Tiffany's lonely. What's your sign, Mark? No, it's, uh, should my friends credit me for taking their pictures? There's something my friends do that I find annoying. I have two friends that I'll take pictures of when asked. I'm not a photographer, but I'll take all sorts of different pictures, mm -hmm. different angles, different poses, lighting, etc. I don't mind and think it's fun. However, when they post the pictures, they'll get dozens of likes and complimenting comments, but I'm not mentioned or acknowledged at all mm. that I took the pictures or that I was even there at all. Is it wrong to be bothered by this? No, I'm with you, Tiff. I think uh, if it's a killer photo and they're getting 11 likes, I think you're right. Just give me a little ad on the bottom. You know, they put the camera icon, a colon, and then the name. There you go. Yeah, I've That's, seen that a lot on Instagram. That's like best practice, right? Or, yeah, and here's the move, Tiff. All you got to do is go, hey, can you take our photo? You go, sure, just tag me or credit me, and they'll you'll have their phone, and they have to say yes because they want the photo. Oh. So there you go. That's how you handle that, and uh, you knock it out early. That's kind of like a threesome. You just go, look, I'll date you, but I want to have threesomes. If they say no thanks, you go, all right, I'll, I'll see you later, whore. But if they say <laughs> yes, you're in. You got to knock it out early. Oh, I like that. I like that. Be up front. Tell them what you expect. And if they're not willing to do it, no threesomes and uh, no photos. No of photos. Threesomes. No yeah. photos of threesomes. Right. God, I wonder if these are threesome photos that she's Ooh, taking. Well, if that's the case, send the handle. We'd like to know uh, <laughs> where to follow. What's your sign, Tiffany? Yeah. What's your sign? All right. Well, that's the end of the podcast. Mark, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. You got it, Fatty. It was fun. You're a nice gentleman, and uh, I'll be happy to help you pack up. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. I was just going to ask, where can people find you? What have you got going on? What, have you, what would you like to plug? Sure, sure. Uh, MarkNormanComedy.com is the website. I'm probably coming to a town near you. Woo. Check out Out to Lunch on YouTube. And uh, I got two podcasts now, Tuesdays with Stories with Joe List, and One More Drink with Sam Marill, and uh, yeah, fuck your dad, praise Allah, and I'll see you in hell. <laughs> All right, talk to you later. Bye bye. Oh, All right. that was amazing. Hey, good F, good F.